Okay, so we're talking Israelis sing Europe. We're going to be looking at three different songs where Israelis talk about this whole idea of Israelis leaving Israel in order to live in Europe. And the photograph by Stefan Widua on Unsplash. Credit to Stefan. So it all began with the Milky protest. That was the way in which it was connotated in the media. It all emerged when Israelis who had gone to visit Berlin found out that local products that were made in Israel were more expensive in Israel than as export. And that they found that just prices in Israel were incredibly high, even for stuff which had been created locally. And you could actually get, for example, you know that those yellow croutony things that they call soup almonds or something by Osem are cheaper in New Jersey than they are in Israel when they're actually made in Israel. This is some three years after there'd been a whole popular protest against prices. There was a realization that nothing had actually changed. So this a protest began and together with this protest came this call to just leave Israel and go to live in Berlin. A group was set up online, the Olimle Berlin, we're going to emigrate up to Berlin. As opposed to Olimle Berlin, which means to go up to Berlin, there were others who were just talking about leaving Israel. And they brought out a meme which said, uh, waiter, there's a fly in my country, as opposed to in my soup. And they say, don't let them mess with your head, just as you'd exchange your soup if it had a fly in it, it's completely your right to move on and exchange your country that has something rotten inside it. And this rottenness, according to these activists, was the way in which prices and price controls in Israel and monopolies in Israel mean that the standard citizen ends up having to pay out far more than he or she ordinarily would in any other country in the world. This was satirized by many. Shai Chalka took the Danube Holocaust Memorial and added a few milky cartons to it. And the largest critic was the new finance minister, Yair Lapid, and he responded to questions about these folks who were wanting to go to live in Berlin. He said, a word for all those who've had enough and are leaving for Europe. You happen to have caught me in Budapest. I came here to give a speech to the parliament against anti-Semitism and to remind them how they attempted to murder my father here only because Jews did not have a country of their own. How they murdered my grandfather in a concentration camp, how they starved my uncles, and how my grandmother was saved from the march of death at the last minute. So you'll forgive me if I have little tolerance for people who are willing to throw the only country the Jews have into the garbage because Berlin is more comfortable. Of course, what's interesting about all this conversation about how it is bad form to leave Israel altogether, and in particular it's bad form to go to Europe, to go to Germany, to go to places where anti-Semitism has been rife and Holocaust took place and we Jews fled from there, is that this is a very Ashkenazi approach to Europe. And when we're talking Ashkenazi, we're saying Ashkenazi as opposed to Mizrahi. A Mizrahi Jew is somebody whose origins are in Arab lands, in Muslim lands, and not Europe. For example, let's take a look at this map of Jewish immigration from 1948 to 1972. Which countries did Jews come from after the State of Israel had been established? And the main thing which is really fascinating about this map is how Eurocentric it is. Look at all these countries. And actually, if we look below the line, it's pretty much exactly the same number of people as are above the line. And yet, how many countries are we seeing on this map above the line? And how many countries are we seeing below the line? There's something really interesting about how Eurocentric even the map is. And in Israel today, ever since something like 2009, the majority of Jews in Israel are Mizrahim, are Jews from Arab lands or Muslim lands. 
And yet mainstream Israeli culture, or should we call it Ashkenazi Israeli culture, has always yearned for Europe. This has been the ultimate Zionist dream, was to be European. Tel Aviv is the only Mediterranean city with its back to the sea because it was established by people who come from Europe rather than the Mediterranean. The lawns and roofs in Israel, people fight to have water on their lawns. When we live in the desert and we have roofs which are built to withstand the snow of Switzerland rather than the burning heat of the Middle East, we are dying to be European. And Israel also has significant scars in the way in which Israel received and welcomed refugees and immigrants from Arab lands. The Europeans were effectively greeted with open arms and Mizrahim ended up in transit camps, effectively refugee camps, for several years before they were given the permission to leave these camps and build their own houses. And even where the houses were built were significantly limited and the choices were limited for Jews who'd come from Arab lands. With all that, so now let's have a look at the people who are creating this song, responding to the Europe crisis, Maugol and Arisa. So Maugolit Tsanani, often simply known as Maugol, is a singer and celebrity of long-standing fame. She's been in the music business for a good long while, also well known for her strong Yemeni Mizrahi identity. And she came together with Arisa, which is, Arisa is actually a, a Moroccan cooking paste, but it's also the brand for a line of parties and events created for Mizrahi gays, led by Uriel Yekutieli, who's a well-known Mizrahi actor, a drag star, lip sync artist, and, and so on. So before we go any further, I recommend you go listen to the song up in the top right, there's that little I and you can click there in order to get to the clip of the song. And also the link is down in the comments as well if you want to click there. See you in a minute. So let's pull out a few of the references that were thrown out during the song. Madam Rothschild, have you had enough of Tel Aviv? So the choice of name is really significant. First of all, Rothschild, that is the place where you get the best cappuccinos, okay? It's the place for the yuppies to hang out. And the choice of the name Rothschild, Rothschild obviously recalls banking, and even more so in Israel when, for example, when Fiddler on the Roof got translated into Hebrew, when they sang If I Were a Rich Man, in Hebrew they sing If I Were a Rothschild. Okay, so Madam Rothschild is somebody who is well established financially, shall we say. Are you fitting in easily with the Germans? Now, this is a question which is being asked in particular from a Mizrahi point of view. So the question is, back in 2014, before the refugee crisis and before Germany opened its arms to folks from Syria and elsewhere, at the time, back in 2014, Turkish Germans were not altogether happily received. Effectively, people who looked Middle Eastern, people who looked slightly darker than your standard Aryan, were not necessarily welcomed so nicely, or at least that was the mythology beginning to emerge from Europe and being heard by Mizrahim in Israel. So fitting in easily with the Germans, there's definitely a little sharp poke, the idea that you're obviously not fitting in nicely. We have the word kapara in the chorus. It's a cracking word. In religious Hebrew, you would put the emphasis on the final syllable, kapara, and a kapara is a redemption, is a way of getting rid of sins by taking a chicken and effectively waving it above your head. But if you put the emphasis on the second syllable, then it's a word of endearment. It's a term of endearment which is used in particular by Mizrahim. It emerges from the tradition, from the religious tradition. If you say kapara alecha, or kapara alaych, it's a way of saying, you sweet thing, that is worth sacrificing oneself for. There was even a hit song called Kapara Sheli, my kapara. Oi kapara sheli, oi kapara sheli. You wish for a Spanish passport. 
Now, here's a really interesting one. You see, because Israelis can't automatically receive a passport. So the idea of living in Europe is not open to everybody. And for a good long while, the strange idea of people being able to get citizenship in Germany emerged from people being able to point out that their grandparents were from Germany. Their grandparents may well have died in the Holocaust in Germany, but the fact that their grandparents were German has allowed many Israelis to get their own citizenship in Germany on the back of their slaughtered grandparents. But here, Margul is talking about somebody who wishes for a Spanish passport. And a Spanish passport is only available to Mizrahim. This all emerges from the Spanish government finally deciding to kind of make reparations for the expulsion of Jews from Spain back in the late 15th century. And most Spanish Jews, Sephardi Jews, Sephard is the Hebrew for Spain, so Sephardi Jews, the vast majority of them ended up in Arab-speaking lands or in Muslim lands. And now the law has been passed that you can get yourself Spanish citizenship, which also means European citizenship, if your family name is the kind of name that Jews had in Spain back in the 15th century. So anybody wishing for a Spanish passport is somebody who has Mizrahi roots, not Ashkenazi roots. And then this final line, Hawedj Shelach. Wedj is LGBTQ plus slang for your look, your style. And your look, my dear, is from Batyam. And Batyam is working class and much more associated with Mizrahim than with Ashkenazim. So this whole song is actually speaking to the Mizrahi young woman who is trying to get accepted and trying to move up in the world in order to associate not only with Ashkenazis but in order to associate with Europeans altogether. And this is being laughed at by the proud Malgol who is saying it may be crazy here but it's it's what we have, and you're addicted to it as well. So there's a question. Do you ever feel that a visit to Israel is a visit to the Arab world, or to an extension of Europe, or a blend between the two? The song sees Israelis as Americans with an Arab sense of honour. So do you understand this as a compliment? or something else, how would you see it? And how would you think that Malgol is singing it? And finally, this is a song that's emerging from the margins, the Mizrahi margins, LGBTQ margins, whilst supporting a form of patriotism against the more globalist elite. So how do these interesting juxtapositions sit with you? And those are our questions about Israelis singing Europe part two. Here it Ain't Europe by Margalit Sanani and Arisa. Photo by Stefan Widua on Unsplash. This was brought to you by Macom, the Israel Education Lab of the Jewish Agency for Israel, in a project we've been working on in partnership with Moisha House and wonderfully generously supported by the Jim Joseph Foundation. Do look out for our other guides to additional songs singing Europe.